Okay, here we're going to look at isolating mechanisms, what things may keep certain individuals apart from one another that will influence the genes that are passed on to a generation or that are prevented from intersecting with an, another species. So reproductive isolated populations, populations whose members do not mate with each other or cannot produce fertile offspring. Reproductive isolating mechanisms are the barriers that prevent genetic exchange between species. So if we have an original population here, and we're seeing a shift into two different um, isolated species here. With our examples of the flies, we have some that like uh, starch and maltose, and then we have a favoritism for one versus the other, and therefore we have individuals that may only mate with those that like a certain food source, separating out and causing subsets of the population to develop. Flowers, examples here, can select for their pollinators. So some flowers have evolved to attract only certain um, species to help them pollinate. So the uh, white foxglove flower is adapted for bees, and this long tube-shaped flower is better for hummingbirds. So this is an example of flowers selecting for certain pollinators to help attract, and that is reproductive isolation because the bees will not be going through and pollinating these flowers. This flower will be trying to match the habits better of the hummingbird than the bee. There's prezygotic isolating mechanisms, and this prevents the formation of a zygote. So this is a barrier that somehow prevents the sperm getting to the egg, or the pollen to the egg. And then there's postzygotic isolation mechanisms. These prevent the proper functioning of the zygote after they formed. So this is the zygote is forming but then there's something that's preventing it from growing to a fully developed and normally functioning individual. Temporal isolation occurs when two populations differ in their periods of activity or reproductive cycles. Examples of leopard frogs and the wood frogs, they reach sexual maturity at different times in the spring and hence do not interbreed. So this is an example of temporal isolation. Behavioral isolation occurs when two populations exhibit different courtship patterns. We have two crickets here, and certain populations uh, produce different mating songs. So a mate is only going to find the proper individual that has the right song. If an individual is producing a different um, tune or song or ritual, they will not be um, selected as part of a mate for that particular population. So the behaviors that an individual exhibits can result in its isolation. There's geographic isolation, and this occurs when two populations occupy different habitats or separate niches within a common region. Example being lions and tigers occupy different habit habitats and do not interbreed, at least usually. They're in different geographical areas, therefore they're not breeding together. This kind of gives a nice summary table of both pre- and post isolating mechanisms. I went over the temporal, that's when they mate at different times of the year. Ecologicals, when two species occupy different habits, habitats. Behaviorals, when they have different courtship behaviors. And mechanical occurs when physical differences prevent um, pollination, for example. In this case, different sized dogs simply mechanically cannot um, produce offspring because they can't physically mate. post isolating mechanisms could be hybrid in, in viability, which means the hybrids are produced but fail to develop to reproductive maturity. It's also hybrid infertility, where hybrids fail to produce functional gametes, and they're sterile, example of our mules. And hybrid breakdown, where F1 hybrids are fertile, but F2 fails to develop properly. So these are giving you some examples, and these are some more specific uh, examples of the general pre- and post isolating mechanisms.